Sydney stared at the single five and nine ones she had earned tonight. Fourteen no-way Jose dollars. Chump change compared to the amount of money she normally earned in tips when she was on the stage. A quick look around the dressing room assured her she was alone. She had deliberately taken her time removing her makeup and getting back into her street clothes as she waited for the other girls to head off for home. Throughout the evening, she had debated whether or not to wait until tomorrow to try and cover up the hole in the basement or to go ahead and do it tonight after closing. Knowing there might be a slim chance of someone discovering it before tomorrow, she had decided to get it done and over with tonight. Stuffing the bills into her purse, Sydney set it back inside her locker and slammed the door, twirling the little combination lock afterwards, as she was in the habit of doing. When she walked back into the bar area, Holland gave her away from where he was mopping the floor. Hey, sugar, still here? Little past your bedtime, isn't it? Just a tad, she admitted. She refused to look at the neon clock sitting over the bar, afraid that if she knew the real time, her brain would take over and tell her body to go nighty-night. I've got a few things I need to do before tomorrow, and you know how Cash likes everything to be neat and tidy when he comes in. The janitor nodded as he watched her head for the basement door. You ain't got some midnight rendezvous with a gent down there, do you? A glance back at the old geezer confirmed what she'd heard. The man was jesting, although she could detect the threat of concern for her. Holland was like that. He took all the girls under his wing like he was their grandfather. Ha ha, I wish. No, I left some crates open when I went down earlier to fetch some wine. I thought I'd better rack the bottles before Cash finds out I'd left them on the floor. It was a little white lie, but it would suffice. Always a nice thing to do, sugar. The man admitted as he stuck the mop into the bucket of cleaning solution. Never leave a job half finished, I always say. I'll just be a few minutes, she added, flipping on the light switch and hurrying down the steps. I'll be here in case you need me for anything, the man called after her. The place looked exactly as it had when she'd left it. In fact, she'd bet her entire night's tips no one else had come down here since her visit. Pulling out her ring of keys... Sydney pressed the button on the little flashlight she kept there. The added beam helped. Okay, all I need to do is find something old and dilapidated and large enough to cover it so if anyone comes down here, they won't notice it. If I'm lucky, by the time someone gets around to cleaning out this shit, they'll think it's been that way for a while. The table was the first thing she checked to see if it was big enough, but the hole was jagged and rectangular. The round tabletop wouldn't work. Her only other recourse would be to build up a pile of boxes in front of it. Sydney paused to stare into the blackness beyond the crumbling brick and concrete. The tiny flashlight sent a pale glow into the space on the other side. As far as she could see, there was nothing inside. Absolutely nothing. She couldn't even see the other wall on the far side. Pretty depressing place, ain't it? The voice was deep and very masculine and right beside her. Sydney shrieked and fell backwards, hitting her shoulder against the broken stool. Without thinking, she grabbed the stool and hefted it over her head, ready to swing it or throw it at the person who'd spoken. A quick glance around didn't reveal anyone else besides her, but she knew he had to be nearby. That voice had been close, too damn close to suit her. She clutched the legs of the stool tighter as her heart pounded furiously in her chest. Where are you? A sudden thought made her swing toward the hole. What if the guy was in there? What if he had been watching her, waiting for her to get closer? Show yourself, damn it! Where are you? Hey, hey, chicky. No need to get yourself in a huff. Settle down. I won't hurt you. Shit! He was close. So close, he sounded like he was standing next to her. So why couldn't she see him? Although the guy spoke in soothing tones, the sound only heightened her fear. No one tried a line like that unless they had something devious in mind. She held the stool up higher. She had to get out of here. Scream. Yeah, scream. Maybe Holland would hear her and come down. If she was lucky, the guy would rab it and take off. She took a deep breath and opened her mouth when the voice said, You wouldn't know what year this is, would you? 